Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to do a deep dive into ETFs. These are the topics we're going to cover in the video, the 20 largest ETFs, 20 best performing, the 23 largest companies in the world, 20 worst performing ETFs, the lowest expense ratios, the highest expense ratios, the returns by category, defining what an ETF is, the history of the ETF, and what to look out for when investing in one. So an ETF, an exchange traded fund, is a hybrid between a mutual fund and a stock. It mimics a mutual fund because it's a basket of securities, but it's similar to a stock where it trades throughout the trading day. A mutual fund only trades once at the end of each day. There are over 3,000 ETFs, and these are the top 20 in terms of market cap. The largest is Spider's SPY 340 billion market cap. The next two also track the S&P 500 index. There are only 23 companies in the world that have a bigger market cap than SPY. I'll show you that on the next slide. But as you know, the stock market has been doing terrible this year. So the 2022 returns for all 20 of these ETFs are pretty poor. But most of these ETFs track an index. So they're passively managed. The expense ratios are really low only three basis points for these three ETFs. So it's almost paying no fees. The first three track the S&P 500. The fourth, the Vanguard Total Market Index, that tracks small, medium, and large cap U.S. companies. The Invesco QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100. There are some foreign ETFs on this list. The FTSE, which is a British index, that has a market cap of $86 billion. If you want to invest in commodities, there's GLD. That tracks the price of gold. The MSCI tracks stocks in fast-growing countries. The Russell 2000 tracks 2000 small cap. And the Russell 1000 tracks 1000 large and mid-cap companies. So the market cap for these 20 ETFs is $2.3 trillion. All 3,010 ETFs have a market cap of $6.1 trillion. So these 20 make up 37% of the ETF market. There are only 23 companies that are larger than SPY. I think this list is about one month old, so that's why the numbers may look a little higher. And these are the top five mutual funds. The largest is 1.3 trillion. Mutual funds have been around a lot longer than ETFs. So there's only five companies in the world that are larger than the Vanguard Total Market Index. The ETF with ticker VTI is similar to this fund. And the second biggest mutual fund tracks the S&P 500. That's over 800 billion. Usually the best performing and the worst performing ETFs are leveraged. Since the market is going down, the leveraged bear ETFs have performed really well. The Dow Jones Triple Leveraged Bear ETF is up 147%. Even though the expense ratio is higher, 1%, I'm sure you'd be happy paying 1% for a 147% return. If you think about it, you'd even pay 100% for a 147% return. Because even though the other ETFs have pretty much no fees, they're all down 20, 30 plus percent. You can see most of these are leveraged and inverse ETFs. There are some oil and gas ETFs because that has been going up a lot this year. These oil and gas ETFs are up almost 90%. And there's a category for hedge funds. And this hedge fund is doing really well, up 78%. And it's only one half of 1% expense ratio. The average expense ratio for these 20 ETFs is a little under 1%. where well, the average for all ETFs is about one half of 1%. But these 20 funds are pretty small relative to the entire ETF market, only 11 billion, 0.2%. And I'm sure you guessed it, the worst performing ETFs are the leveraged long ETFs. The Triple X Long Fang, the Triple X Dow Jones, the Triple X Bullish Semiconductor, those are all down over 80%. The worst is the short natural gas, that's down 93%. So you almost lost all your money this year if you invested in KOLD. But these are pretty small ETFs, only 241 million market cap. And they have pretty high expense ratios, 1%, almost double the average. And these 20 ETFs only make up 0.3% of the entire ETF market. 
If you're looking to save on expenses, some ETFs have zero expense ratio. But sometimes the best things in life are not free because all of them are down this year. But that's just the market, the market's down. But three of the top five biggest ETFs in the world are on this list. Only three basis points. So it's pretty much free investing in these ETFs. And it pretty much tracked the market. The average of these four are down 20%. The entire ETF market is down 18%. And if you wanna see a list of all 3,010 ETFs, you can do so if you're a member of my Patreon channel. I post all the Excel files and PowerPoint slides on Patreon. So these 20 ETFs make up 17% of the entire market. The ETFs with the highest expense ratios are here. Almost 11% expenses. So in this Van Eck BDC income, you lost more money on expenses than performance of the assets. You lost 11% on expenses, 7% on the assets. But I would be happy to pay 2.5% if I got a 14% return, especially during a time like this. If you're down 10% for the year, you're doing really well, let alone up 14%. But the reason it's up because it's a long short fund, so it's made up a lot on the shorts. But you wanna look in the long run. In the long run, these funds might not be performing so well. But if you do see in the long run, they keep up with the market, and during bear markets, they perform well, then I would definitely put my money into ETFs like that. And the market cap for these 20 ETFs is only 2.2 billion, which is 0.04% of all ETFs. On my Excel file, I broke down all 3,010 ETFs by category. Only 35 of those ETFs are up more than 60% this year. That's 15 billion of assets, which is 0.2% of all the ETFs. 22 ETFs are up 40 to 60%, 58%, 20 to 40%, 119 between 0 and 20%, but over 90% of ETFs are either flat to down 40%. Over 2,200 funds at $5.7 trillion. The outlier funds, the above 40% or the below 60%, those are mostly leveraged funds, either double or triple leveraged. If you want to learn more about Excel and you're a member of my Patreon channel, I leave all the formulas in the file. In order to organize the ETF by buckets, I dropped in this if statement. It's an if statement with eight nested ifs inside of it. And to get the count, I did a count if formula. And to get the assets, I did a sum if formula. In order to get the chart, you could use a pivot table. I just use formulas. So let's define an ETF. So an exchange traded fund is like a mutual fund. It's a basket of securities that trade like a stock on the exchange. So the share price fluctuates all the time with an ETF, where a mutual fund, it only changes once a day. So that's really the big difference between a mutual fund and ETF. If you have a particular investing strategy, I'm sure you can find an ETF that fits that strategy. If you wanna invest in certain sectors, say just semiconductors, you can invest in ticker SMH, shaking my head. That's a Van X Semiconductor ETF. If you just want to invest in commodities, say silver, you can invest in the iShares Silver Trust, ticker SLV. If you just want to invest in bonds, there's hundreds of bond ETFs. One of them is iShares one to three year treasury bond, ticker SHY. Don't be shy investing in this ETF. If you want to just focus on real estate, there's a Global X Super Dividend REIT ticker SRET. And remember on my Excel file, list every single ETF with the ticker, the name, the category, the return for the year, and a market cap. If you like alternative energy, you can invest in Alps Clean Energy, ticker ACES. If you just want to invest in U.S. securities, there's the iShares U.S. Utilities, ticker IDU. There's many, many international ETFs. If you like Japanese funds, there's a Goldman Sachs Active Beta Japan Equity, ticker GSJY. Here's a brief history of ETFs. The first one was SPY in 1993, so it's a fairly new product. Mutual funds have been around forever, but ETFs are pretty young, not even 30 years old. And this ticker tracks the S&P 500 index. The S&P 500 index contains about 500 of the largest U.S. publicly traded companies. 
I think it's 496 companies because some companies are listed twice, like Google is listed G-O-G and G-O-G-L. So there's 500 securities, 496 companies. And the index started in 1957 by credit rating agency S&P. And this is considered the best index to track U.S. equities. And most investors all around the world use this as a benchmark. So it may be confusing, but you cannot invest in an index. It's just a way to track things. The only way you can invest in an index is through an ETF, like Spiders, IVV, or VU. You could also buy a mutual fund. You could also buy each individual stock yourself. But it's a lot easier to just put your money into an ETF than trying to buy 500 securities. And look how much the ETF market has exploded. It's worth over $6 trillion. It's pretty much exponential growth. And people are pouring more and more money into ETFs each year. The only reason the market cap went down from 2007 to 2008 is because the market crashed. Not because people weren't putting more money into ETFs. So it's a super convenient and affordable way to invest in a lot of stocks. But there is concern ETFs do lead to a lot of volatility in the market. If you think about it, $6 trillion is poured into these ETFs. $6 trillion can influence the market a lot. But I wouldn't be too concerned that ETFs are going to go away for this particular reason. They're going to always be around, I'm pretty sure. So what do you want to look for when you buy an ETF? Trading volume is really important because the higher the trading volume, the more popular the ETF and it's going to be easier to find a buyer when you look to sell the stock. That's the beautiful thing about a stock market is all the liquidity. It's very easy to find a buyer or seller. Because when you buy a stock, you're buying a piece of a company. If you bought a company, say a local dry cleaner in your town, that's not a very liquid asset. It's not that easy to sell a small business. But it's really easy to sell a stock in the stock market. Expense ratio is also an important thing to look at the lower the expense ratio, the less money you're giving back to the fund to manage it. Some funds are pretty expensive because they have lots of people actively researching and buying and selling things. Sometimes it may make sense to pay higher fees if you're getting better results. But what I've noticed, passively managed funds like SPY tend to do a lot better than these actively traded funds. The most popular metric people look at is past performance. But what a company did in the past doesn't mean they'll do the same thing in the future. But it is a good feeling seeing positive returns in the past. Because would you want to invest in a friend's business that loses a million dollars every year for the past 10 years? You'd be a little concerned. I'd feel more comfortable investing in a friend's business that made a million dollars a year for the past 10 years. And you should try to look inside the ETF to see what they're investing in. Not all of them are investing in hard assets. Some are investing in options or swaps or different leverage contracts. So it's just good to understand what it's investing in. Because if they're investing in hard assets, actual stocks or actual gold, that means they have the ability to sell those assets if they need money. And most ETFs are commission free. That's why people invest in them. But sometimes there's hidden fees. So you just want to check it out to make sure the ETF is commission free that you're looking at. So I hope you learned something new in this video. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe. Talk to you soon.